Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I have got the 2020 BMW Z4 here. I am in my home base, first time. I think this is the very first film I'm actually doing in my home base of Madison, Wisconsin here. Rented this from someone uh, in the Southern Wisconsin area. Um, and I'm really, really excited to give you guys this quick review. So um, I'm gonna go over the exterior, the interior, kind of talk about what this car means to BMW and how it fits into the lineup. Um, talk about the tech in this car, which is definitely a huge highlight and talk about the driving impression, right? If you're getting a convertible like this, you're definitely interested in how this car drives. So um, let's dive right into the overview here. So the Z4 is BMW's roadster in the kind of dying uh, segment here in America. We've got cars like the Audi TT, the Mercedes SLK, which is actually discontinued after the 2020 model year. Um, and kind of like the Supra is kind of a competitor in a way. Um, shares a lot of parts with the Supra, so kind of not really. The Supra also isn't offered in a convertible. The Miata is kind of the, the cheaper spectrum of things, whereas the Porsche Boxster is going to be the higher spectrum of things. So this car kind of has a weird niche where it's, uh, you know, it's it, the price is right in between two really, really really very popular cars and I think that's why you don't see the Z4 too often um, but I think the really cool part about this car is that you don't see much of these cars on the road. BMW redesigned this for the 2019 model year after a four-year hiatus and uh, brought it back um, and it looks better than ever in my opinion. I think this looks way better than the previous generation Z4s. A lot more comfortable. They widened it and they uh, stretched it a little bit too so definitely more of a BMW kind of like all their cars like I mentioned in my M440i review they're kind of going for this more grand touring type of effect so that it's more comfortable and I feel like that's kind of the niche they're trying to occupy but um, you know I'll, I'll kind of show you guys if they actually do a good job in that. So the MSRP of the base Z4 which is the S Drive 30i which I have here starts right below $50,000. This places it squarely against rivals such as the Audi TT and the discontinued Mercedes SLK. However it is quite a bit higher than the Miata which is another really popular competitor even a high trim Miata but it's also lower than the base trim Boxster. Um, the higher trim of the Z4 is the M40i, which actually just debuted for the 2020 model year, and that MSRP is for almost $65,000, which is a fairly significant increase, but does come with a much more powerful engine. The way that this Z4 is optioned, uh, we're looking at a dealership price tag of about $55,000, which is not bad actually for all the features you get. This car has a heads-up display, has all digital gauge clusters, a digital infotainment display, um, and you know, honestly drives like a dream. So I feel like this is probably the trim to get. All right, so let's take a look at one of my favorite parts of this car's redesign. The exterior styling. This looks so much better than previous generation Z4s in my opinion. It looks very modern and really aggressive. And I feel like this is exactly what they should have done with the M440i, right? Like keep it with the smaller kidney grill. I don't know why BMW chose to elongate this so much for the 4 series. Um, but basically, you can see this is a gorgeous front grill. I mean, I, I feel like this they really did a great job here. The headlights look absolutely stunning. And you have this really interesting stacked thing, right? Where like there's one headlight above the other one, which I think is really interesting. And then kind of going into the lower area, um, you know, you've got a lot of functional vents, which is really nice and really exciting, uh, very contrary to some of the other competitors in this segment. And while we're at the front of the car, I wanted to pop open the hood and show you guys what's underneath um, the hood here in the engine bay. You've got BMW's uh, famous two liter inline four. This is turbocharged and gives you 255 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. Um, so again, this is a smaller engine. This isn't the same one that's in the M40i, which is the three liter inline six. That one generates 382 horsepower and 368 pound feet of torque. That one gets you zero to 60 times of 3.8 seconds, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, that's basically the same engine you'll find in the, in the 3.0 Supra. Um, this engine, however, is not slow by any means. This gives you zero to 60 times of 5.2 seconds. And honestly, it feels faster when you're driving this car. This is all mated to an eight-speed automatic, shifts very, very nicely. You do have paddle shifters as well if you wanna have some manual fun there. Um, and it gives you about uh, actually really good uh, fuel economy in this car. You've got 24 city and 32 uh, highway miles per gallon for a combined average of about 27. That's pretty impressive in this segment and actually puts it above some of the other competitors. It actually might be class leading. For the diehard enthusiasts, unfortunately, this car is not offered in a manual, which is actually kind of a surprise given that a lot of the other competitors are these days. Um, but I, I think that's why BMW is trying to go towards the more luxurious side of things, right? Um, and this car is only offered in real wheel drive, so at least that part is nice. Um, they actually don't have an all wheel drive version of this. That's what the S drive and the, the S and the S drive actually stands for is that it's not all wheel drive. I wanted to give you guys a quick glimpse into how the engine sounds. So I'm going to start the car and then rev it a little bit. So going along, 
along the side of this really gorgeous car, you have got really nice wheels. I love these wheels. These are actually the base wheels. I feel like I'm impressed with all the base features in this car. These are 18 inch wheels um, and they are uh, standard, like I said, on this model. So they're actually not an upgrade or anything, but they look really good and they are performance non-flat um, tires. And I feel like that makes them really, really fun uh, to, you know, take on hard corners and stuff like that. You've actually got some, uh, you know, side vents as well, and they are functional, which is actually kind of a nice touch for, um, you know, some, a car like this. And you've got really aggressive body lines in general. I feel like the car looks really good. I mean, it's one of those things where this car definitely looks better um, <laughs> with the top down. I feel like with, when we put the soft top back up, it is only offered in a soft top. It definitely doesn't look as nice. But with the top down, as you can see, it's a really gorgeous looking car. This is the uh, black sapphire metallic color, which is actually I, not my favorite color choice. It's a little subtle. Um, and it is actually a $595 upgrade. So I feel like if I were going to choose an upgraded color, I feel like I would have chosen another color. Um, this car is kind of black on black on black with the interior and exterior. Um, so going into the trunk space here, um, trunk space is not bad. About 10 cubic feet of space. And as you can see, you actually can fit a decent amount of things, right? Probably like two good carry-on uh, luggages and things like that. I've got some water bottles. I've got a pa uh, backpack in here for scale. Um, but basically, you can see it's not the smallest trunk in the class. So I feel like that at least is a good thing from a practicality standpoint. Unfortunately, there is no power for this though. So it's all manual. You don't have a power thing or anything like that, which is a little unfortunate. I believe in higher packages, you actually have the kick lift gate, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, otherwise, the rear design is very similar to a lot of BMW's other sportier looking cars, right? Very similar to the M440 that I reviewed, um, and very similar to the new 8 series as well. Um, I think it looks really good, right? It looks aggressive, um, and I feel like the full LED taillights make this car look, make it pop a lot. I think my one gripe with the rear here is the tail pipes. I feel like I really wish the exhaust tips were a bit more, um, you know, I, I don't know if they could have done a quad exhaust or something like that. I feel like I'm just a sucker for a quad exhaust, but the, otherwise they look pretty good. They're kind of large, pretty standard though. Nothing, nothing too special there. All right, guys. So now let's move on to the interior of this car. This is kind of an area that saw huge with the new generation. Even just looking at the door panel, you can already tell a lot nicer material than the previous generation. BMW is really trying hard here to make sure that you know the Z4 is a BMW. It's not just a sports car that you can compare to a Miata or something like that, right? So getting into the interior, just kind of like your typical roads here, not the funnest thing or easiest thing to get into. I feel like I bruise myself every time I get in, but um, you've got a pretty nice interior, right? You've got this nice leather steering wheel. You can see the screens, right? This is something that uh, the Z4 has a huge advantage over its competitors. I think that's how it differentiates itself is the tech. You've got two 10.25 inch digital displays here. Um, I don't have the car on right now, but I will turn it on momentarily. Um, you've got a pretty nice looking center console here and the seats are supportive. These are the M bucket seats. They look really, really good. And I think give the car a lot sportier of a feel. Um, you've got a two way memory on both the passenger and the driver's side seat, which is kind of cool. Um, but otherwise, you know, the interior, I feel like the tech is really where this car stands out. Um, it looks very similar to other BMW interiors. If you've seen any of their recent redesigns, you can check out my other reviews again, the M440i, the X7, all of them look very similar to this. In typical fashion, I wanted to show you guys what the key fob looks like. So this is your typical BMW key. You know, if you had the M40i version, you'd have a nice little M uh, badging on the side with the stripes, but otherwise you've got pretty typical stuff here. This card does have the $300 remote start option here, um, but otherwise you've got your panic button, you got your tailgate opening and then lock and unlock. I, I do love how BMW has the lock button as just a BMW logo. All right, so now that I've got the car running, you can kind of see what those digital displays look like. Very good, very high res. Um, you know, we'll talk about that more in the tech review, but otherwise everything looks pretty solid here. You've got a wireless charging pad there. You've got some storage space here. I will say, you know, kind of like you'd expect for a Roadster, you don't have the most storage space in this vehicle. You can see that the center console armrest thing here, you actually have to open it in order to have your water bottle holders. Um, so, or I guess your cup holders. Um, and you can even fit, uh, you know, a sunglass container here. So you're going to have to take out your sunglasses and just put it here. But you do have a little bit of space here and it does say Z4. Very, very fancy. You've also got a net here. You can kind of put some other stuff here. You've got a pass through to the trunk, which is kind of convenient. Um, and then you've got the really nice wind deflector here. I've been using this on freeways and it's been really nice. 
very, very quiet. Um, you know, your hair still gets ruffled a little bit, but not nearly as much as if you're just driving a, you know, uh, economy roadster like the Miata. But it is a nice luxury touch, and it does make the ride much more comfortable. For example, I drove this for about an hour and a half straight. And, you know, really no complaints. The seats were supportive. You've got four-way lumbar control, um, and you've got a lot of, I think, 16-way adjustable seats. So overall, a very good feeling car, um, and it definitely feels better than what you'd expect in the normal Roadster class. I will say the main cons, like I just mentioned, the storage space isn't the best. You don't have too much storage space. You do have a little bit of space here and a little bit of space on the passenger side. Some, you know, strange, awkward spaces here. I feel like BMW just tried to fit whatever they could, really. Um, but overall, you know, you're not buying this car for its practicality, right? Um, you do actually have a, a thigh extension, which is really nice. I, I have always liked those. Um, it is a manual though, which is not as fun as the um, power controlled ones. And you've got pretty good visibility, uh, especially with the top down, kind of like most convertibles. With the top down, you've got really good visibility. Uh, with it up, you've got a giant blind spot kind of right around where I'm looking right now. But overall, um, you know, I, I am impressed with the cabin quality here. I do think the interior colors aren't exactly what I'd choose, you know, black on black. I do feel like it would look a lot nicer if they had red seats. I feel like that always enhances the sportiness. Always worth it on a sports car, in my opinion. I believe on this car, it's a $1,500 upgrade or something like that. Um, but otherwise, you know, you do have a lot of, um, you know, plastic material and stuff like that, but you do have some, you know, leatherette uh, stitching on the sides and things like that, um, and, it, and it kind of looks pretty good. You know, on the dash, you've got some uh, stitching as well, and um, the speakers look good, and overall, like, the interior is impressive and a huge upgrade over the previous generation, and I think a lot of people definitely notice that right away. Um, but otherwise, let's dive into the tech. All right, so in typical BMW fashion, the main standouts in the tech here are definitely these uh, huge displays in the middle. This is much better than you'll find in, for example, the Audi TT, um, the discontinued Mercedes SLK, a lot of the other competitors, even the Porsche Boxster. I still feel like this has an edge over that. Um, you know, if you like the more traditional look, you might like the Porsche a bit more. Um, but in general, this is going to be the best infotainment system you can find in uh, something of this class. And I, I firmly believe that is very true. Um, so you've got Apple CarPlay filling up the screen. You know, there is a lot of black space here. They fill it out in things like the X7 with a 12.3 inch display. I don't really know why they don't do it here. Even the upgraded M40i's don't have that. So don't really know what that space is doing. It kind of always bothers me. Um, but you know, like I said, you do have the wireless charging pad. You do have wireless Apple CarPlay, which is always a nice perk. Um, and otherwise, you know, the typical BMW display, I don't want to go too much into the infotainment system. Um, you know, I've reviewed it multiple times now in both the M440i and the X7. This is BMW's i7 infotainment system. Easy to use, looks really good. You know, I really like the way they have this all set up here. The settings, super easy to go through. You've got carrying car, my favorite thing, you know, I've already showed you guys that. Um, and otherwise, uh, you know, you can always check things. Vehicle status is always easy to look at. Settings, very easy to go through. Looks really good. Very, very fast. I, and like I said in other reviews, I just love using this, uh, this pad right here, this control rotary knob, instead of using the touchscreen. This is touchscreen though. Everything is touchscreen. It's very fast. Um, and overall, like, I mean, it feels really good. I think, I don't know why. I just feel like as, it's just a little far, especially when you're in such a small car, it's like hard to reach there. And I feel like it's just easier to reach down and touch the rotary knob. So overall, you've got hard buttons to get, kind of get you to quick um, spots, and you do have a lot of different options here for how to change your drive modes. You've got auto hold, you've got your convertible button here, and uh, you know your start stop button, all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, very, very standard BMW stuff, and you can check out pretty much any of my other reviews and see the exact same thing. Um, but overall, the tech is impressive, right? This is definitely in a place that BMW separates itself from its competitors in this segment, especially. You've got this button here that changes the display on the right-hand side. Looks pretty cool. Definitely not as configurable as the Audi um, virtual cockpit, unfortunately. But you do have a nice looking look. I, I do feel like I wish BMW would allow you to change a bit more. The center, you can either basically display a map or no map. <laughs> there really aren't too many choices. Um, but you know, the displays do look good. They show you everything you need to find. You know, I've driven a few of these now, so I feel like I know where to look, but you know, at the beginning it was hard for me to find things like your range, time, drive modes, things like that. I will notice one of the annoying things about this is that my drive mode comfort right there, um, it always reverts back to comfort. I don't understand. As a sports car, it should always default to whatever you had at last. I just don't like having to change mine every single time I get in the car. And come on, let's be real. Who is going to keep this car in comfort, right? You want this on Sport Plus. 
Otherwise, a few other safety features I'd like to highlight. You do have blind spot monitors. You can kind of see that little triangle on the side. Um, you do have rear cross traffic alert, um, and you do have a heads up display right there. You can kind of see it. Um, but basically, all of these come as part of the premium package. This is $3,000 in the 2020 Z4. I believe it's actually a little cheaper in the 2021 Z4. Um, but otherwise, the only change for 2021 Z4 is that you get satellite, radio, and uh, Android Auto is standard, finally. So in the 2020, Android Auto is not standard, actually, but Apple CarPlay is, which is kind of interesting. Seems a little, uh, you know, against certain phones there, right? Um, you've got the infamous button here in the middle. It looks cool. I feel like people are always asking me like what it does, right? It really doesn't do too much. It, it allows you to choose which safety features you want to configure um, individually. So essentially you can press this individual button and it'll turn on a certain set of uh, safety features. It's kind of like a memory setting for your safety features, I guess. Kind of cool, but I feel like in general, most people just leave it all on. Um, but otherwise, you've got a Chris display here. This is the standard BMW infotainment iDrive 7 display. Um, you know, fast, like I said, right? You can click things, it's very fast. The navigation I can show you guys, really, you know, it's getting better, right? We've got Madison, beautiful Isthmus here, but it's, it's just not gonna compete with Google Maps. And I, I really, you know, it, one day, maybe they will, but for now, it really can't. Um, so I think most people are still gonna be using Apple CarPlay. Uh, it's actually a little hard to find the first time I was trying to look for it, but up there in the corner. And the last thing I wanted to go over is the drive mode. So you've got Sport Comfort Eco Pro. So it's kind of hidden, the Sport Plus setting actually. You have to press Sport and then it actually shows this thing. And you can see you've got Standard Sport and Plus Sport. And I mean, who's gonna keep it in Standard? The good thing is when you do press Sport, it automatically switches to Sport Plus, which it remembers. Memory is a huge thing in my opinion that cars need to work on in general with their infotainment systems. Um, like I said before, you do have two-way uh, memory settings on the passenger seat, which is kind of cool, right? I I feel like this makes it a very ideal car for like a couple's vacation type of thing. So one of the cool tech features that I didn't showcase in my other BMW reviews, but I wanted to go over here is the intelligent voice control. So a lot of cars have voice control these days, right? You have your standard microphone button here, but BMW takes it a step further by understanding phrases such as I'm hot or I'm cold or, you know, skip track or play whatever, right? It's like, it's, it's a bit more fancy. Um, so for example, you can activate it by simply saying hello BMW here. So, hello BMW, I'm hot. I'm lowering the temperature. It will be more comfortable shortly. Pretty impressive. I feel like that's actually quite convenient, you know. I don't know if <laughs> I don't know when you wouldn't be able to adjust it manually, but I still think it's a nice little trick that you can show your friends when you're driving them around in this Z4. Before we dive into the driving impressions portion of this review, I wanted to show you guys the operation of the convertible. So obviously that's a huge reason you get one of these cars, right? It's super fun, especially in the weather that we're currently experiencing here in Madison. Honestly, a little too hot for me, but, um, but yeah, the convertible is very fast and you can just uh, basically take the top off or down using this thing. Um, it is a soft top only. Um, there is no hard top available of this car but it is pretty fast and you can operate it at speeds of less than 25 miles per hour so that is very convenient but i will demonstrate what it looks like here so you can see it is pretty fast you know uh i believe it's less than 10 seconds total to get everything down including the windows and all that sort of stuff and then the same thing back up all right going into my driving impressions of this car here uh, this has been a blast to drive for the past few days. I will say it, it, it is a much more refined ride than the previous generation, but I feel like the previous generation was very harsh, right? So, and honestly, that's, that's kind of the same thing you'll find in, you know, the Miata and things like that. Uh, BMW, like I said before, I mean, this is the theme throughout this Z4, this redesigned Z4, is that they're trying to make this more refined and comfortable and luxurious. And they are doing a good job of that. I just feel like it's not really why you buy this car. If you want a more comfortable ride, go for the M440i or something like that right like i just i don't know it, it, it is a weird spot for me i i do feel like the harsh ride i mean to be fair a lot of this is because i'm riding completely in sport plus i don't think i've put this in comfort a single time throughout this entire weekend um but you know I, I still think that this is not going to be as comfortable as people want for something like a daily driver you can definitely weekend drive this like this would be super fun for a weekend driver um, and, you know, I haven't driven the Porsche Boxster, but I feel like that would be really stiff competition in terms of both comfort and, you know, classiness, all that sort of stuff that people want in the Z4, but I'm not really sure you're going to get. 
And I think as you guys noticed, I have the top down right now. Why else would you have a convertible, honestly? Uh, we have some beautiful weather out right now, so definitely wanted to enjoy the sunshine. And you can see it's pretty quiet, right? Like there's not too much wind noise. Um, you've got this nice wind deflector back here, which is really nice. Um, definitely a huge perk um, that, you know, the other roadsters like the Miata won't have. So I, I definitely think that's how BMW differentiates itself here. Um, and I will say, again, it is an intention grabbing car. I have not seen a single other car that looks like, well, I mean, to be fair, this newly redesigned Z4, I just haven't seen one on the road, um, you know, anywhere I've driven this past weekend. And it is definitely more of a unique vehicle, which is kind of cool. You'll see a lot of Boxsters and you'll see a lot of Miatas and, you know, all the other, uh, you know, older roadsters like the, you know, Honda S2000, even things like that. Um, but yeah, this is going to be one of the more unique roadsters you'll see on the road. All right, we're gonna try to launch it here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is really fast. So BMW does quote zero to 60 times in about 5.2 seconds. I feel like with launch control, you can actually get faster than that. So that was really fun. So one big positive of this car that I wanted to mention, uh, obviously is the handling. The handling dynamics on this car are amazing. I feel like, you know, obviously being in the Roadster class, you expect something that is able to really weave through those corners. I had so much fun in the Dells, kind of going through a lot of the smaller, uh, you know, 25 miles per hour uh, corners at uh, much higher speeds than that. <laughs> um, and, and it feels easy, right? This is such a small car, it maneuvers so easily. And I feel like, you know, this in this day and age with all these performance SUVs out, you you still can experience really really fun cars like this uh and, it, and it's a different experience than those uh performance suvs right they always say that those cars handle as well as these cars but they really don't i think no matter what you can't knock off the thousands of pounds that come with a smaller car like this so the handling super fun bmw did a great job of that as expected right um and uh you know i definitely think that's one of the biggest positives of using this car as a weekend driver so overall, I really do recommend this car for people who are looking for a fun weekend driver, right? It's, I don't think it's practical enough to warrant as a daily driver. I mean, you can make it work obviously, right? But I just don't think people will enjoy this on road trips for you know longer than an hour or two. And really for a commute of even 30 minutes, I feel like the fun pretty quickly uh, dissipates when you have you know jarring brakes and things like that. There are definitely just more comfortable options. I will say the tech though, again, the tech is a highlight of this car. You have a really nice backup camera. You have some really nice safety features that can make it work as a daily driver. And it is quiet, right? Like the top down, it's gorgeous. I feel like th they've done a really good job with you know eliminating the wind noise. You can take this on highway speeds, like I said, and it really is not too loud. Um, you can still have a conversation with someone else even up to you know 60 miles per hour things like that without really raising your voice too much that's really impressive for a uh for a convertible so overall i really enjoyed this car but again um definitely not not something that people are going to want to daily drive especially if you live somewhere with a lot of potholes um or, or you know somewhere with rough roads i suppose um that's pretty much all i wanted to talk about today so um Hope everyone enjoyed this review. Uh, I, I had a lot of fun with this little roadster over the past few days here in Madison, my hometown here. So um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe. You can subscribe down here and you can check out my other videos up here. Thanks everyone. See you in the next video.